Our first lesson is from the first chapter of Genesis. First this, God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light and light appeared. God saw that the light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day and named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. Our second lesson is from the 38th chapter of Job. Then God answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins, I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Order from Chaos That's our existential reality this week. On Monday night, after 19 days without water, I heard a gurgle coming from the toilet in our upstairs bathroom. I ran over to it and watched that somewhat murky and highly chlorinated water fill the bowl. It felt like I was watching creation itself unfold. From the soup of nothingness, the bottomless emptiness, the inky blackness, that Hurricane Helena brought to our beloved Western North Carolina. The Holy Spirit fluttered her wings and with a lot of hard work on the part of uh, our water department gave us the gift of water. And I literally burst out laughing as I flushed the toilet and watched the bowl fill up a second time. I felt like a little kid watching a miracle unfold. My heart was filled with gratitude for those who are working so hard to bring water back into our homes. You might not have your water restored yet, but trust me, it's a beautiful sight. And I encourage you to enjoy it as if you were seeing water for the first time. It is a sign of hope, a gift of grace. Later that night, I finally slept the best night's rest I've had since this whole nightmare began. Order from Chaos. I'm sure you've seen it too. I'm sure you've seen people helping people all over the place. They're carrying heavy buckets of water to their elderly neighbors so that they can flush their toilets. They're feeding those who don't have the means to feed themselves. They're in hazmat suits with respirators, cleaning the toxic muck from our homes and our city streets. They're working hard to restore power, bring back our Wi-Fi and cell phone service and restoring our water system that three weeks ago seemed beyond repair. They're devising plans to bring our businesses back and to support the artists and musicians who make this town come alive. Order from chaos. I'm sure you've seen it too, and I hope it's a balm for your weary souls. I hope it helps you hold on for one more day. I hope it reminds you that in the midst of this soup of nothingness, this bottomless emptiness, this inky blackness, the Holy Spirit is most certainly fluttering her wings and giving birth to light in the midst of our darkness. Well, this brings us to Job. And if you missed last week's sermon, let me catch you up quickly. If you're suffering from post-trauma brain fog like I am, then maybe this will jog your memory. Job and his family had experienced unimaginable loss and trauma, Three of his well-intentioned friends tried to give him advice regarding why he was suffering so much. Unfortunately, it was horrible advice. They said he brought his suffering on himself because of his sin. In other words, God was punishing him. At this point in the story, Job decided to ignore his friends and try to plead his case with God. He poured his heart out. He held nothing back. And he even ended with what I see is a word of hope, and maybe even a crumb of gratitude. As he tells God still, I'm not annihilated by darkness. The Holy One has hidden deep darkness from me. Are you with me so far? 
Well, when we arrive at chapter 38, God decides to give Job an answer. However, God takes an unusual approach. God does not answer Job's questions directly. Instead, he begins to question Job. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Now scholars have a lot of opinions regarding what is happening here. But I would like to believe that God is speaking of the power of the Almighty to bring order from chaos, to transform a soup of nothingness into mountains and valleys, dry land and seas, to fill a bottomless emptiness with plants and animals and people, to turn the lights on so that the inky blackness exists no more. I don't think God asks these questions to belittle Job or chastise him. I think God asks these questions to give Job hope that God will also bring order to the chaos he is experiencing in his life. If God can give birth to creation, then God can surely take all the pieces of Job's shattered life and make them whole again. And this is our word for hope. This is our word of hope for today as well. My dear friends, I know each and every one of you is exhausted and weary, including me, as we begin the hard work of rebuilding our homes, our church, and our city. And I know I've only made things worse by announcing my retirement at the end of this year. However, I believe the God of creation can and will bring order to our chaos. God will help us all to find a way to move forward, giving birth to light in the midst of the darkness that all of us are experiencing. And God will bring healing to you, to your family, to this church, to this community, and to me. I am not as strong as you think I am, and I pray you'll understand my need to take better care of my emotional and physical well-being. And in the next two months, I will do my best to prepare you for the next chapter in the ministry of this church. Do not despair, my beloved friends. Have hope. The God of creation is with us and will bring order to chaos. Amen.